machine has appeared in homes across America. Double and redouble his power. 32. Six times more powerful than 3DO. All right, baby. 40 times more than Super NES. Hey, yo, there is no 32-bit Super NES. Are we going to see the games or what? Show them! The 32X is an add-on to the Sega Genesis video game console codenamed Project Mars. The 32X was designed to in expand the power of the Genesis and serve as a, transition a transitional console into the 32-bit era and to the release of the Sega Saturn. Independent of the Genesis, the 32X uses its own ROM cartridges and has its own library of games. It was distributed under the name Super 32X in Japan, Genesis 32X in North America, Mega Drive 32X in, in the PAL region, and Mega 32X in Brazil. Unveiled by Sega at June 1994's Consumer Electronics Show, the 32X was presented as a low-cost option for consumers looking to play 32-bit games. It was developed in response to the Atari Jaguar and concerns that the Saturn would not make it to the market by the end of 1994, though it was conceived as an entirely new console at the suggestion of Sega of America executive Joe Miller and his team. It was converted into an add-on for the Genesis and made more powerful. The final design contained two 32-bit central processing units and a 3D graphics processor. The 32X failed to attract third-party developers third-party game developer, video game developers, and consumers because of the announcement of the Saturn simultaneous, 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 I can never say that word, simultaneous, well, you know what I mean, released in Japan. Sega's efforts to rush the Sega 32X to market cut into time for game development, resulting in a weak library of 40 games that did not fully use the hardware, including Genesis ports. Sega produced 800,000 32X units and sold an estimated 665,000 by the end of 1994, selling the rest at, at steep discounts until it was discontinued in 1996 as Sega turned its focus to the Saturn. The 32X is considered a commercial failure. Initial reception was positive, highlighting the low price and power expansions to the Genesis. Later reviews, both Compton, both contemporary and retrospective for the 32X have been mostly negative because of its shallow game library, poor market timing, and its market fragmentation of the Genesis. Okay, the history. The Sega Genesis, initially released in Japan as the Mega Drive in 1988, was Sega's entry console in the 16-bit era of video game consoles. The console was then released as the Genesis in 1989 in North America market, with the releases in other regions following a year later. Although the earlier release, release of the Sega CD add-on had been commercially disappointing, Sega began to develop a stopgap solution that would bridge the gap between the Genesis and Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn serving as a less expensive entry into the 32-bit era. The decision to create a new system was made by Sega CEO Nakayama and broadly supported by Sega of America employees. According to former Sega of America producer Scott Bayless, Nakayama was worried that the Saturn would not be available until after 1994 and about the recent release of the 64-bit Atari Jaguar. As a result, the direction given was to have was to have this second release to market by the end of the year. During the Winter Consumer Electronic oh, Development, during the Winter Consumer Electronics Show in January 1994, Sega of America Research and Development head Joe Miller took a phone call in his Las Vegas hotel suite from Nakayama, in which Nakayama stressed the importance of coming up with a quick response to the Jaguar, including on this call were Bayless, Sega Hardware Team head Hideko. Hideki Seto and Sega of America Vice President of Technology, Marty Franz. One potential idea for this came from a concept from Sega of Japan, later known as Project Jupiter. An entirely new independent console project, Jupiter was initially slated to be a new version of the Genesis with an upgraded color palette and a lower cost than the upcoming Saturn, as well as with some limited 3D capabilities, thanks to integration of ideas from the development of Sega's virtual processor chip. Miller just suggested an alternative strategy, citing concerns with releasing a new console with no previous design specifications with 
to within six to nine months, according to former Second of America producer Michael Lafam Miller said, Oh, that's just a horrible idea. If all you're going to do is enhance the system, you should make it an add-on. If it's a new system with legitimate new software, great. But if it if the only thing it, it, it does is double the colors, Miller. Miller, however, insists that the decision was made collectively to talk about alternative solutions. One idea was to leverage the existing Genesis as a way to keep from altering Sega's customers who would otherwise be required to discard their Genesis systems entirely to play 32-bit games and to control the cost of the new system. This would come in the form of an add-on. From there, from these discussions, Project Jupiter was discontinued and the new add-on, codenamed Project Mars, was advanced. At the suggestion from Miller and his team, Sega designed the 32X as a peripheral for the existing Genesis, expanding power with two 32-bit Super H2 processors. The SH2 had been developed in, in uh, 1993 as a joint venture between Sega and Japanese electronics company Hitachi. The original design for this 32X add-on, according to Bayless, was created on a cocktail napkin but Miller insisted insists that this was not the case at the end of the Consumer Electronics Show. With the basic design of the 32X in place, Sega of Japan invited Sega of America to assist in the development of the new add-on. It's about time. Although the new unit was a stronger console than originally proposed, it was not capable with, compatible with Saturn games. This was justified by Sega's statement that both platforms would run at the same time and that the 32X would be aimed at players who could not afford the more expensive Saturn. Bayless praised the potential of this system at this point, calling it a coder's dream from the day with its twin processors and 3D capabilities. Sega of America headed up the development of the 32X with some assets from Sato's team of Sega of Japan shortages of processors due to the same 32-bit chips being used in both the 32X and Saturn hindered development of the 32X as did the language barrier between the, the teams in Japan and the United States. Before the 32X could be launched, the release date of the Saturn was announced for November 1994 in Japan cons concluding with the 32X target launch date in North America. Second of America now was faced with trying to market the 32X with Saturn's Japanese release occurring simultaneously. Their answer was to call the 32X a transitional device between the Genesis and the Saturn to which Vegas describes of strategies. Frankly, it just made us look greedy and dumb to consumers. Pre-launch promotion and release. The unveiling of the 32X to the public came out the summer came at the Summer Consumer Electronics Show in June 1994 in Chicago, promoted as the poor man's entry into the next generation games. 32X was marketed for its US $159 price point as a less imp a less expensive alternative to the Saturn. However, Sega would not answer as to whether or not a Genesis console equipped with a Sega CD and a 32X would be able to run Saturn software. Founder of the 3DO company, Trip Trip Hawkins, was willing to point out that it would not start it would not stating everyone knows that 32X is a band-aid. It's not a next generation system. It's fairly fairly expensive. It's not particularly high performance. It's hard to program for, and it's not compatible with the Saturn. In response to these comments, Sega executive Richard Brudvik Leonard Lin, 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 right, pointed out that the 32X would play Genesis games and had the same system architecture as the Saturn. In August of that year, GamePro highlighted the advantages of the upcoming add-on and its 32-bit processors and significantly lower price. Price nothing that no doubt noting that no doubt gotta get it now. Gamers will spend the big bucks to grab Saturn or PlayStation systems and games from Japan for the rest of us. However, 32X may well be the system of choice in 1994 and promotion for the new system. Second promised 12 games available at launch and 50 games due to for release in 1995 from third-party developers. 
The 32X was released on November 21st, no, November 21st, 1994 in North America in time for the holiday season that year. As announced, it's it retailed for $159 and had a reasonably successful launch. <coughs> Sorry, successful launch in the marketplace. Demand among retailers was high and Sega could not keep up with orders for the new system. Over 100,000, no, 1 million orders had been placed for the 32X unit. But Sega had only managed to ship 600,000 units by January 1995, launching at about the same price as a Genesis console. The price of the 32X was less than half of what the Saturn's price would be at launch. Despite Sega's initial promises, only six games were included at its North American launch, including Doom, Star Wars Arcade, Virtual Racing Deluxe, and Cosmic Carnage. Although Virtual Racing was considered strong, Cosmic Carnage looked and played so poorly that reporters made jokes about it. Games were available at a retail price of $69.95. Advertising for the system included images of 32X being connected to a Genesis console to create an arcade system. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a joke. That's a joke if you get that. Japan received the 32X on December 3rd, 1994. Hold on. The system's power release came in January 1995 at a price of wait, uh, 169 pounds, 169.99 pounds, and also experienced initial high demand. So we're gonna go. We're going on to the decline. Despite the lower price console consoles po <laughs> positioning as an inexpensive entry into 32-bit gaming, Sega had a difficult time convincing third-party developers to create new games for the new system. Top developers were already aware of the coming arrival of the Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, and PlayStation, and did not believe the 32X would be capable of competing with any of those systems. The quick development time of the 32X also made game development difficult, according to friends, not wanting to create games for an add-on that was a technological Technically, technology, technology, technological dead end. Many developers decided not to make games for the system. Problems plagued game developers in house due to the time crunch to the release of the 32X. According to Vegas, the games in the queue were effectively jammed into a box as fast as possible, which meant which meant massive cutting of corners in every conceivable way. Even from the outset, design of those games were deliberately con <laughs> Wait, uh, conservative because of the time crunch. By the time they shipped, they were even more conservative. They did nothing to show off what the hardware was capable of. Journalists were similarly concerned about Sega's tactic of selling two similar consoles at different prices and attempting to support both Linking Sega's approach to that of a General Motors and seeming <laughs> segmenting the market for its consoles in order to convince the press that the 32X was a worthwhile console, Sega flew in journalists from all around the country to San, Fran to Fran San Francisco for a party at a local nightclub. The event featured a speech. From Tom Kalinske, live music with a local rapper praising their 32X and 32X games on on, ex, on exhibit. However, the event turned out to be a bust as journalists attempted to leave the party due to its loud music and unimpressive games on the sway, only to find that the buses that brought them to the nightclub had just left and would not return into the scheduled end of the party. Though the system had a successful launch, Demand soon disappeared over the first three months of 1995. Several of the 32X third-party publishers, including Capcom and Konami, canceled their 32X projects so that they could focus on producing games for the Saturn and PlayStation. The 32X failed to ca catch on with the public and, it's, and, it's, and, it, and is considered a commercial failure. By 1995, the Genesis had still not proven... The Genesis had still not proven successful in Japan, where it was known as Mega Drive, and the Saturn was beating the PlayStation on. So Sega CEO Nakayama decided to force Sega of America to focus on the Saturn and cut support for Genesis products, ex, ex, ex cutting 
<laughs> executing a surprise early launch of the Saturn in the early summer of 1995. Sega was supporting five different consoles before this. Saturn Genesis Game Gear, Pico, and the Master System, as well as the Sega CD and Sega 32X add-ons. Sales estimated for the 32X stood at 6 665,000 units at the end of 1994. Despite assurances from Sega that many games would be developed for the system in early 1996, Sega finally conceded that it had promised too much out of the add-on and decided to discontinue 32X in order to focus on Saturn. In September 1995, the retail price for the 32X dropped to $1990 and later the remaining inventory was cleared out of stores at $19.95 with 800,000 units sold in total. The Reputation and Legacy Initial reputation to initial reception to the 32X and its games upon the launch of the... Wait, hold on. Okay. Reception and Legacy Initial reception to the 32X and its games upon the launch of the add-on was very positive. Four reviewers from Electronic Gaming Monthly scored the add-on on 8.7.8 and 8 out of 10. In their 1995 Buyer's Guide, highlighted the add-ons enhancements to the Genesis, but questioning how long the system would be supported. GamePro commented that the 32X multiple input and power cords make it as complicated as setting up your VCR and noted some performance glitches were with the prototype such as freezes and overheating, but experience but expressed confidence that the production models would perform well and gave the add-on their overall approval. Views of its launch game such as Doom were likewise positive. By late 1995, feedback to the, feedback to the add-on had sourced in its 1996 buyer's guide. Electronic Gaming Monthly, Gaming Monthly's four reviewers scored the add-on three, three, and three, and two out of ten, criticizing the games like the game library and Sega's abandonment of the system in favor of the Saturn. A review in the Next Generation pan the 32X for its weak polygon processing, the tendency of developers to show off its capabilities with gar garshly colored games, and its ap apparent function as a simply a way of grabbing extra 1994 mind and market share while waiting for Saturn. The review gave it one out of five stars. Game player assessed it as so much less powerful than the Saturn and PlayStation that its lower price could not be considered as an enhancement and said that the vast majority of its games could have been done just as well on the SNES. Additionally, commenting, commenting that both first party and third party software supported had been weak they concluded the lack of support in good games and the release of Saturn makes the 32X a system that never was. Retrospective, retrospectively, the 32X is widely criticized as having been undersupported and a poor idea in the wake of the release of the Sega Saturn. OneUp.com comment Jeremy Parrish stated that the 32X tamed, tainted just about everything it touched. Dang, dude. Games Radar also panned the system, placing it as their ninth worst console with the reviewer Michael Reperez criticizing that it was a stopgap system that would be thrown under the bus when the Sega Saturn came out six months later, and everyone seemed to know it except for diehard Sega fans and the company itself. Retro gamers Damien McFerrin offered some praise for the power increase of the 32X to offer ports of Space Area, Afterburner, and Virtual Fighter that were accurate to the original arcade versions as well as the add-ons price point, stating if you didn't have deep enough pockets to afford a Saturn, then the 32X was a valuable option. It's just a shame that it sold so poorly because the potential was there for true greatness. Levy well, not her again. Levy Butch and, you know, I just talked about it with the Genesis. Writing for IGN saw some sense in the move for Sega to create the 32X, but criticized its, imp its implement implementation according to Butch Anna. Butch Anna? By I don't know how to say her name. I actually thought the 32X was a better idea than the Sega CD. The 
32x while underpowered at, le at least advanced the ball. Maybe it only gained a few inches in no, so no small part due to a weak library, but at least the idea was the right one. Oh my god, there's so much more. In particular, the console status as an add one in poor timing after the announcement of the Saturn has been identified by reviewers as being responsible factors for fracturing the audience for Sega's video game console. In terms of both development and consumers, Al Gim Scott, Alan Marriott states that every add on white whittled away at the number of potential buyers and discourage third-party companies from making the games necessary to boost sales. GamePro criticized the concept of the add-on, nothing but no, noting the expensive involved the expenses involved in purchasing the system. According to reviewer Blake Snow, just how many 16-bit attachments did one need? All in all, if you were one of the unlucky souls who completely bought into Sega add-on frenzy, you would have spent a whopping $650 for something that weighed about as much as a small dog. Writing for Game Ra Raiders, Re Reprez noted that developers not wanting to waste time on a technolog technological dead end abandoned the 32X and drove. Gamers quickly followed suit, turning what was once a promising idea into an embarrassment footnote in console history as well as an object object lesson in why console makers shouldn't spit split their user bases with pricey add-ons. Reperez went on to criticize Sega's decision to release the 32X, nothing that ultimately noting that ultimately the 32X was the product of boneheaded short sightedness short sightedness and extensive put Sega into competition with itself. Once the Saturn rolled out, writing for IGN, Butch, Butchan points out, no notice that we haven't seen many animals like the 32X since 1994. I think the 32X killed the idea of an add-on like this, a power booster permanently, and that's a good thing because add-ons, if not imp implemented properly, just splinter an audience. Former ex executives of Sega have mixed opinions on the 32X. Bayless believes firmly that the 32X serves as a warning to video game industries not to risk splitting the market for consoles by creating an add-on and was critical of the Kinect and PlayStation Move for doing so. Friends places the 32X commercial failure on its inability to function without an attached Genesis and lack of a CD drive despite its compatibility with the Sega CD starting stating the 32X was is destined to die because it didn't have a CD drive and was an add-on, an add-on device. It is never, an add-on device is never as well thought out as a built from scratch device. Miller, on the other hand, remembers the 32X positive, 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 positively. Oh my God! Why can I not say that? Stating, I think the 32X actually was an interesting value valuable platform. The timing was wrong, and certainly our ability to stick with it given what we did with Saturn was severely limited. There were a whole bunch of reasons why we couldn't ultimately do what we had to do with that platform without third-party support and with the timing of Saturn, but I still think the project was a success for a bunch of other reasons. In hindsight, it was not a great idea for a whole bunch of other reasons. So, that's the story of the Sega CD and 32X. I do hope you all enjoyed, and join me next week as we take on Sega history for the Sega Game Gear. Yes, not the Saturn, the Game Gear. Because I have to get to that one too. I probably should include it in the Master System episode, but I feel like it's its own console and its own little story, so it deserves its own episode. But until then, see you, Slayers.